Hello my friends and welcome back to our next Medieval 2 commentary. Today I got something special for you. It's a 4v4 battle and it is another battle that Cyrus the Great sent in so thanks a lot for that. And as you can see here it's kinda a hilly-ish map where the red forces, I call them now as they are marked as red, have a bit of an advantage as they do have a hill while the blue slash green forces need to attack upwards. So we go over the green forces or blue forces first. We have Poland here. It's Lithuanian cavalry once, twice, three, four times. Then we have General's bodyguard in the back. Lithuanian archers four times. Slav, uh, slave mercenary, Slav mercenaries four times. Woodsman four times and dismount, dismounted Polish knights three times. We have then Cyrus the Great who choose to go with the Mongols. He has on his left flank Kane's guard. This is very heavy cavalry. They look awesome. But yeah, we have then in front of them Mongol foot archers one, two, three. Three. Then here's one mo oh, five. No, four. Sorry, I can't count. Mongol f infantry, Mongol infantry. So twice Mongol infantry and four Mongol foot archers. Then we have here twice Ka uh, Khan's guard again. Dismounted heavy lancers. Nice. And then two units of trebuchets. The general's bodyguard, obviously, and Nafatan four times. So he heavily relies on his cavalry, his trebuchets and his skirmishes. He doesn't have any infantry unit that is specialized in melee combat apart from these heavy, heavy lancers. We have the Holy Roman Empire here. Three or four units? To yeah, four units Teutonic Knights. Very very awesome cavalry unit. S uh, very strong as well. The General's Bodyguard. Nice color. Then we have dismounted Imperial Knights four times. I just love the detail the uh, Total War Creative Assembly put into these, uh, all of these units. Pavis Crossbowmen, very very strong skirmisher unit. And the last faction here on the uh, on the attack or defend. Let's call them defenders as Red is normally aggressor as well as attacker. Russia. We have crossbow militia. One, two, three, four. What a surprise. Then we have what the hell? Cavalry force here is called Trutsina. Heavy cavalry twice. Then we have here General's bodyguard. And this is General's bodyguard. Okay. We have Trutsina more. So four Trutsina, one General's bodyguard in the middle of the mix here. Peasants, nice. They have a two-handed axe. It's twice. No, one one peasant. I want to see how they are. Well, but these are woodsmen. Other peasants have just yeah, pitchfork. Lovely. Then we have here, Burdage are uh, axemen. They like look nearly the same as the woodsmen. Burdage axemen twice, three times, woodsmen. Four Burgess Axemen, three Woodsmen, and two Peasants. And then here, more Drutzina Cavalry in the back. The Russian player needs to go uh, needs to go up against the Moors. We have here the army of them, or at least what we can see. Here, Catapults twice. Oh, actually, three times. Or four. Yeah, you think of even four times. Yep, four four uh, units of catapults, so eight in total. Dismounted Christian guard. Ah, yeah, they look awesome. They have a small shield though. Dismounted Christian guard and bodyguard of the general. This is all we see so far. I'm curious what else he has to bring. I guess a lot of cavalry. Or no, not cavalry, infantry. 
Here the England player, a very very lovely and juicy target for catapults or trebuchets. If you land a couple of shots in that mix, you're gonna you're gonna be ensured to kill a lot. Armored sergeant, Spillman, dismounted English knights twice, th uh, three times, um, and armored sergeants, armored swordsmen, human archers, human archers, generals, bodyguard. Very nice. Not that much. Uh, no cavalry apart from the general and the tiny bit anti cavalry in form of the sergeants. But if they get shot from the back, that's not going to help them that much. And here's a, a very, very interesting for us. We ha I, ha I haven't uh, made a commentary yet with these guys. It's the Aztecs. I'm very curious how they're going to play out. Jaguar warriors. One, two, four units here. Let's go over the main line first. Uh, again, I love the uh, amount of details. Uh, the Kua Shikwe, I guess you can call these. One, two, three, four. And then four more Eagle Warriors. Nice. And then the frontliner Aztec Spearmen, three units. And Coyote Priests behind the lines. They look like they're wearing p their pyjamas. I mean... I wouldn't be too scared of them. Maybe the mask, but apart from that, not too much. And here we have the general's bodyguard with his elite warriors. Let's go to the last army here. It is the Turks. In the front line, Ottoman infantry, three units. The main army is Saracen militia front line. Dismounted the pie lancer, two units. Nafatan, two units. General's bodyguard and the pie lancers, three on the right flank. And what's here? Allen Light Cavalry. Okay. Let's start into it. And let's see what these trebuchets are targeting. Immediately the Aztec guy. Did he lose anything here? Check you. No, not nothing yet. He did a bit of hit point damage as he did hit these guys. Oh, also, let's see what does this player have. Did he reveal anything else? No. His catapults are moving forward. And yeah, that was what I was afraid of. I'm commentating this battle blind, by the way, so I don't know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, as we can see here, I mean, yes, the Aztecs might have a disadvantage here, but it is still a bit unfair that the players get given that advantage here, and they're just going to camp up here. Yes, um, Cyrus the Great does have his trebuchets, and he can target important units and hopefully get a couple of kids in. Yeah, now the English force marches up as well. The best thing would be if he could hit with a couple of shots into this blob here. That would be absolutely the devastating. The killed the leader of our allies. Avenge him. His warriors weep and lose heart. That's starting nicely. The hell? He just ran in straight into... All of these guys here. Dismounted Arab cavalry. Arab cavalry. L lots of units now here. He just shot straight into them and expected everything to go fine. That was an effective shot. These guys lost half of their men. These, this guy's lost 15 of one catapult shot hitting. So they are highly inaccurate, but when they hit, they hit badly, and here, even more. Now that he's running back, even more units get hit because the field, as you can see, they have quite a big area that they are covering, and if they are running, they stretch everywhere, and that makes it even worse, these hits. We have one you Oh, Russia really doesn't like his general. Move the back to the enemy staying there like this. But yeah, let's see what is going on here. One unit of Tritonic Knights coming over to help. 
And that's a defensive position, I tell you. That must be the pain in the ass to get into that. And yeah, they have even the range advantage. I mean, come on, this is nothing you are scared of if you sit on the mountain here. Oh, that was a lovely chunk of troops taken out. Bill okay, only the Billman. But still. From 48 men down to 27? That's awesome. And there's some archers in it as well. The human archers are down to 29 and the Billman down to 27. So he, he got two units. That's even better. I mean, every every kill he can get, that's just a win for these guys. Our men have slain the enemy general. That coward can go feast with his savior. That is a very lucky hit there. And okay, the enemy does make it kinda easy to hit, get hit. As you can see, they do have quite a wide positioning. I know the Aztec player doesn't want to do that game anymore. Very, very smart and very wise. Because the tribute sheets don't have the best accuracy, but I do think they have quite a lot of ammunition. So they could sh keep on shooting there for quite some time. And if they get one more general or a couple of in uh, very important units, that's not going to go down too well. Yeah, I mean, look at the accuracy of these guys. They just don't hit anything. Interesting positioning here. I'm curious how they are going to handle this. Let's quickly pause it. I want to go over to Russia and see how they are doing. Uh, they are still standing, getting shot at. The Teutonic Knights did engage over here. I'm sorry, I'm very confused. I'm trying to find the Teutonic Knights with this minimap. Yeah, here they are. They lost about half of their unit. This much Christian got. They attacked. They, did they kill a couple? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not too sure. I don't think so. I don't know really. So that seems to be stand and fight. Now he's advancing. Lucky that only got a couple of guys. But yeah, we want to go to the main fight here. So yeah, the Khan's guard running forward now, getting into the Eagle Warriors and the Aztec units. That was a lovely hit. Here, and Archers again lost quite a big chunk. And how is it going al all over the line here? Doesn't look too good actually. The Eagle Warriors hardly lost anything and the... Uh, the bodyguard of Cyrus the Great is already down to 11 men. These Eagle Warriors, are, they lost 15 men in 2 or 3 charges. So yeah, now Russia is fighting as well, and yep, these dismounted Imperial are losing. They're even routing. These knights should charge in now, or should have charged in before we have even. the enemy badly. They have only half their men left. Yeah, that depends which enemy army. Here the. <coughs> Polish forces are routing as well. The Turk and English player are working, seem to be working together. Yeah, here, cut the last units. Smarted Polish knights fighting to the last men, now routing. The uh, cavalry, these cavalry units should charge right into here. Armored swordsman is a perfect target. Now his men will fear us. Yeah, that's great. Two generals dead now. At least I think so as they just played two sequences. But look at that, the Aztecs just slice through everything. Ok, 
Okay. Here the Mongol cavalry is cleaning up from the, the back line. Badly. They have only half their men left. Mightiest Khan, only half of our force remains. Okay, so Cyrus army is half uh, at the half man arm is half man line now, and two or three enemy armies are as well. So it doesn't look as bad as I think, but most units are routing. Uh, so yeah, that, they're surrounding all these Tsu or whatever, Eagle Warriors, and they are routing now. Yeah, here. They should really pull out their cavalry out so they can these units can route instead of stand and fight. So yeah, Hoover, I think they're even winning that. I think they have a couple of units left here. They are re they are also um, coming back from routing. Billman, Billman. These kind of units, they can't do any not much against all of this cavalry. And what's happening here? Russia is winning as well. The Turkish forces or the Moors are on their retreat. Catapults did not do as much as they were supposed to, I guess. Even though the first shot was so lucky, immediately the general down. So, what else is going on here? Yeah, he Ooh, the Turks and the, uh, the English player, they pulled back with their remaining forces. And have quite a lot left actually. Armored sergeant twice. Human archers four units. Watch how these weaklings run. Hunt Two more them armored down. archers. Ottoman infantry three units. Saracen militia four three one units dis uh, mounted Zipai lances. Two Nafatan. Oh, three Nafat and they're brave enough to stay. Okay, they're charging now into the flank of these Yemen archers. They're dropping rapidly, these archers. And yeah, what else is going on? They're yeah, just using the cavalry now to run in. Hammer and anvil, only that they don't have the anvil. They're running in and running out, which is very smart as the cavalry charges just do a lot of damage to the units. But as soon as they get stuck in the close combat, these spear units here will kill them over time. What does the Holy Roman Empire have left? It's modern Imperial Knights, Imperial Knights, Imperial Knights, Pavis Crossbowmen, two units. Three, four units. So, doesn't look too good as you can see on the bar as well. It's 70% of the allies killed and 66% of the opponent killed. It's an only how many? 3% or 4% difference now, but I think it is quite an important difference. And as you can see, all of these units here are not really that well depleted. Now the Russian forces are coming as reinforcements. And their army is still quite nicely intact as well. And they only bring peasants. Or oh, one unit of peasants. And come on, if the peasants can survive this, everyone can. They're all tired, so it's, they're not going to be too effective. But he's also doing the nice thing of going into the flank as well as back of the opponent, seizing the hill, putting them in a very nasty position, and charging the general's bodyguard from all sides. Just, I'm not sure the English general shouldn't be dead yet. Let's see if we can find him. He shouldn't have a shield. And now rescue operation is coming, but they quickly decide otherwise. Let the English pro uh, general here die. Eight men left. A ver no, still fresh, yeah. Only a fool could lose this bet. And then he routes. Very, very, very well done. I can't see the general. 
So yeah, as I said, the Russian player very smart positioning. Now they have hammer as well as anvil. I'm not sure if the army will be enough to beat them. But this is again the similar position as um, I think it was Demax who had when he played versus France or England. Versus England, I think, as well. When one army body was positioned on the flats and behind him in the back there was on the hill positioned a couple of archer units with a couple of close combat troops as well and he just charged at them to take them out first before the reinforcements could arrive and if these guys would be smart I would just send all I, all I have on these on the Russian forces they are split they are all very tired and here you can see now going into the crossbow militia here immediately routing and if they would rush in here with everything it would be very difficult for the uh, for the allies over here, the Mongols and the Holy Roman Empire to get here in time before this army breaks which is a problem now they're going to start firing and hopefully unleashing hell on these guys uh, the Ottoman infantry is already firing at them and so yeah, let's see how this is going to go out. I guess no one wants to make the first step. Yeah, here now the frontal assault. They still have such massive, like their troops still have quite a lot of numbers, 40 to 34, 29. Downhill charges from the cavalry will do quite a nice job of them as well. Now he's pulling back. Ah oh yeah, here cavalry. Turks bodyguard coming in. Charging in. What is this? The militia? Yeah, the militia is routing. Either they don't have much morale or... I don't know, they're just scared. Quite a lot is routing now of Russia. Trudzina here with 11 men just running. And is this army marching forward? Yes. So in the other replay I uploaded with the Marksu, the opponent did not immediately march forward with his other army body. So the Marksu could very easily defeat one, then turn around and defeat the, the other badly. one. They have only half their men left. But here, as you can see, they do the right thing. It's because half of the army is up there now, they do expose themselves here. And Cersei so immediately take advantage, runs in, defeats a couple of, or breaks a couple of human archers. These armored sergeant needs to react, get out of position, and get attacked then as well. So it's going quite nicely. The hill is lost again. Yep. And they didn't take too many losses there. He gets another human archers off the field. Not off the field, but he inflicted more losses to them. Yeah, the, this is... These guy units... Ah, at least they're fighting to... No. The Burge Axemen. Not fighting, fleeing. Our That's allies are scattered like scared geese. We must fight on. It's not looking good. I give you that. It's looking very bad, actually. Knowing the favor is now 84% of the allies killed and only 79 of the opponent. So it's a 5% difference, which isn't too bad. And as soon as the opponent does make a mistake. It is going to swing in your favor heavily, but for that the opponent needs to make a mistake first. And the main problem that the allies here face now is all of their units are below half strength. Meaning one decides of charge on one of them and they're going to rout. The next one maybe I have a chain rod or the morale is so bad that as soon as they lose a couple of men from the next shot are going to rout as well. So it's definitely nothing good. Here that's a nice target, these armored swordsmen, they are heavily exposed and are going to get killed now. It's a very very good target, 
kind of thrown away by the English player even though they could have just charged forwards here and tried to clean everything up 20 armored swordsmen left broken and exhausted these guys here, they are shaken they should get charged, yes they are getting charged now showing their back even better, 28 men before the charge they even counter charge yeah, and 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. Still fighting though. 10 men, 9 men. Okay, they are gone. So that was very well done. And the main army that's left now is these Turks. 3 units of Ottoman infantry. 46, 47, 42. They hardly lost anything there. Dismounted Sikh Highlands is 39, 31, 29, and Saracen Militia 39. Okay, this is Saracen Militia as well, 31. But these units are all built up above half strength. Nefton, Nefton. So that's a very important fact. Crossbow Militia firing here as well. Human archers. Because if they get charged, as you can, as you saw in these swordsmen, they do stand and they take quite a bit, quite, a, quite some time to get down and get defeated. While these units here, they are going to route very, very quickly. I think let's just fast forward this until something happens. As I don't really think that they are able to win that anymore. Unless these guys make huge mistakes. Okay. Exchange of missiles, I guess, then all the time. Yeah, now the frontal assault begins. And the body got decided to turn around last moment. Why? I don't know. Ah, oh, the cavalry here. They came to counter charge. Let's see these nerf turn. Yeah. A very nice charge here. They do get, should be able to get this Ottoman infantry. It's Ottoman infantry, yeah, it's the archers. So they do manage to get one of these units gone. Smarted Imperial Knights, they are fighting. Our Victory seems certain. Like scared geese. We must fight on. I mean, the Turks are not known for the best morale, so. That we have bled the enemy badly. They have only half their men left. And these Neptunes here with their morale blow. It's a Shanro, that's actually very, very good and I well done as well as luck. They got very lucky I guess. I mean they got a couple of units defeated there. Then the warriors have killed our foe's general. Now okay, these men will better. fear us. That's even better. Even though I think that was the no, that was the Turkish general. And yeah, they are routing now. They're routing quite badly. And the Naftons, their extra morale penalty. It does. Uh, yeah, it hurts them very badly. They, it already a couple of units now that were running at them here. Yeah, Nafton as well. It got hurt very badly and started routing. Just chucking their grenade slash ancient molotovs and they still have cavalry left which is our a great Warlock advantage has been slain. may he be judged justly and our warriors remain steady that's not too good even though Cyrus only has his cavalry left and his neftons and these nefton guys are doing a hell of a job routing the morale of everything and now the only units left are here armored sergeants and nefton Oh, and here one unit of dismounted Zipai lances. And then here's somewhere scattered Yeoman archers and Yeoman archers. But the rest seems to be routing. Huh. <laughs> oh, that's quite bad. The general's body got the last horse just burned to death. Okay, it's. It's very close now, but still not looking too good because 
quite a lot of Ottoman units did r um, rally again. But against cavalry they can't do that much. Now we will see the Ashashim heavy infantry. Let's see what they can do against the Naftan. Dismounted the pie lances. Yeah, but if the cavalry would not have ha survived, that would have been definitely the end of Cyrus the Great and his friends. Or at least his allies. As these charges, they just completely wrecked the Turkish forces. I mean, now it's 95% killed on each side. And now these guys charge in here. Lost already a lot of men in the charge, and now they're getting charged in the back from cavalry. That's not the the best place where you want to be. Shaken and wavering, broken. So what do we have left now? These these archers, and they are not the Scots Guard. I mean, they are going to fall fairly quickly, I guess, if cavalry just cavalry just charges right into them. And then that should be this battle over. And there we see the cavalry coming. Nine men general's bodyguard. Eager and warmed up. Our enemy is dead or fleeing. Our warriors hold the field today. 1% different, 1% more enemies killed than allies, and that is the victory. As you can see here, Cyrus the Great didn't have many men, I mean he only had a couple of archers and then two units of tribal shades. He lost most of it, and but killed by far the most. He killed 900 and caught another 150, so 1050 roughly. The Polish player only got... 300, maybe 375. Uh, the Holy Roman Empire, 750. And Russia, 500. Of the opponent forces, the Turk did the best by far with roughly a thousand. He caught a lot of people, 361. It's amazing. And yeah, let's see which unit did the best for Cyrus. Um, casualties inflicted. 113 counts got the other cavalry because it survived until the end. 106 and the 80 on the trebuchet. That's nice. So, yeah, all in all, a very, very awesome battle. I really enjoyed this. I hope you did as well. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. If not, then give me a dislike and tell me why you didn't like it, as I will improve or try to improve next time. And I see you as well next time.